quick show of hands. How many of you grew up watching Star Trek? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now hold your hands up. I want everyone to look around. And despite us being at TED Women, there's a lot of us who grew up with Star Trek, right? And watching Star Trek was actually a huge family affair uh, in our household. Uh, my dad and my brother were really interested in the technology that the crew were using. My mom, on the other hand, was a little into Captain Kirk, yeah. <laughs> right? Whereas I was absolutely captivated by this idea that a crew of people were going to these far off places looking for life. And it was actually this search for life, this exploration that inspired me to become an aerospace engineer. But at some point, I stopped looking for life in outer space and instead started to look at life much closer to home. And the footage that you're looking at right now is not a star field. It's actually the ocean at 400 meters or a quarter of a mile deep. And what you're looking at is marine snow. And unlike outer space, where we have yet been able to find life, the ocean and every drop of it is teeming with life. And so that's why I've become a bioengineer to learn more about this mysterious place as well as the organisms that inhabit it. So the ocean is inhabited by a lot of alien and crazy looking organisms like this one. And we're constantly finding and discovering more of these organisms every day. So this organism looks pretty big, right, on the screen. But actually, this animal is about a centimeter or a, about an inch in size. And most of marine organisms are even smaller than that. So imagine such a small organism living in a really dynamic environment where food and nutrients and the things that are necessary to sustain life are really limited. And food for these organisms aren't, isn't really that appetizing. For these small animals, they largely feed on marine snow, which is made up of particles, mucus, and dead bodies of other organisms, right? Pretty delicious. <laughs> but mixing of the ocean, the transport of these nutrients and elements that are necessary to sustain life is vitally important to the ocean and those organisms. And I study whether or not organisms are able to contribute to that mixing in some way. And so let me explain how we go about doing that. So this is my dog, Kieran. I know, I think she's pretty cute too. <laughs> and if you're wondering, she's an English Shepherd. They're fantastic dogs. Uh, but I want you to ignore her and focus on the footprints that she's left behind. Now, footprints for the trained eye provides a lot of information, right? It can tell us something about that organism, what it was, and also what it was doing at the time. Now, terrestrial organisms will leave footprints behind in sand or dirt. But marine organisms will leave footprints, what we call hydrodynamic signatures, behind in fluid. But because fluid is transparent, you have to add something to it, right? And so what you're going to see is a dye visualization that clearly illuminate what these hydrodynamic signatures are. And so like terrestrial footprints, these hydrodynamic signatures provide a lot of information for us. It tells us something about who that organism is and also what it was doing at that time. Is it feeding or is it swimming? And so not only can we visualize what these hydrodynamic signatures look like, we can also measure them using some tools that are available to us normally in only a laboratory environment. And so using lasers and high-speed cameras, we can actually illuminate particles that surround organisms in the water that they swim through. 
And so using these particle images over time, what we can do is compute and get a velocity field or a velocity information. And that can tell us a lot of additional information about their swimming and feeding ability as well as their mixing ability. And we've also developed a device, um, if you're wondering, that's me holding it. It's a mobile device that allows scuba divers to swim to the organism or the process that they're interested in measuring and measure those hydrodynamic signatures that are present. And so you may be wondering what things have we learned from this? And we've looked at a lot of different organisms, and if you look at the snapshots of each one of those hydrodynamic signatures, you'll know that they are distinct and they vary depending on the kind of behavior that organism is undergoing. But in addition to these hydrodynamic signatures, we also noticed a feature that has never been seen before. And if you look at this dive visualization, I want you to focus on the volume of fluid that's following the animal closely behind it. And so for these long distances that animals travel, you can see that that volume of fluid continues following that organism as well. And so doing experimental and numerical tests, we're actually able to show that this feature allows organisms to mix fluid in regions or in distances that are much greater than themselves. So think about that. If a single organism is able to generate mixing of a fluid that's in a region that's bigger than itself, what happens when you have many organisms? And so, it's a very interesting question, right? And there are many implications. If, as you have populations of organisms swimming around in an environment, what kind of an effect is that having? For instance, what are these implications, right? So are these organisms, by creating these hydrodynamic signatures, are they having any effect on the physical and chemical makeup of our oceans? How has overfishing, right, the mass removal of biological mixers, how has that affected the health of our oceans? And we also know that the ocean is extremely important in the process of absorbing carbon dioxide from our atmosphere, which has implications for our climate. What role, if any, do these tiny, tiny organisms play on larger processes in the ocean? So the only honest answer I can give you right now is that we don't know. But that's okay, because this is science, right? And through the scientific iterative process that it is, we can eventually accumulate enough evidence to determine whether or not this process is indeed important to the ocean. And so this topic, biogenic ocean mixing, is really brand new, and it's up to us to come up with evidence that either supports this idea or negates it. And so you may be wondering what's next. And how can we possibly know everything we need to know about the ocean if we're only looking at organisms and processes at the surface? And so with colleagues of mine from Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, we are developing and deploying new technology that allows us to measure hydrodynamic signals of organisms from the surface to 4,000 meters or two and a half miles deep. And we're going to be looking at how fluid and nutrients are transported through the oceans. Like this organism, it's a couple centimeters or inches big. It's able to extract about a third of all particles near the surface here in Monterey Bay and deposit them on the, the bottom of the ocean. We can also look at the longest organisms on our planet and learn how they swim and it can inspire and allow us to develop underwater vehicles of the future. And finally, we can look at swarming organisms and whether or not they have an impact on mixing in the ocean. And so I hope I've convinced you all in that by developing this new technology and deploying it, we can reveal unseen worlds and learn how fluid motion will affect these organisms. And by studying things that are alien to us, we can actually inform something about topics and processes that are very important to us. 
Thank you.